has taken us halfway around the world. At the moment, there are new leads, but nothing conclusive. Our thoughts continue to be with the families who are still waiting for news. In the meantime, we are grateful for the ongoing cooperation shown by all our partners in this multinational search. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now the floor is open for Q&A. We'll start with the local media. Vision Media first. First one, please. Please, kenal kandigi, dia padu. No, you can sit down. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Saya Shima daripada TV Al Hijrah. Tak Sri memandangkan banyak petunjuk di jumpa di di bahagian Korea Selatan. Adakah Malaysia akan merancang untuk memindahkan pusat operasi SAR dekat negara berdekatan dengan Korea Selatan? Dan sekiranya ya, macam mana dengan logistik dan sebagainya? Dan kedua, Sri. Banyak selepas 17 hari, banyak soalan teknikal diajukan Dan bila agaknya um, pihak Boeing dengan Rolls Royce akan turut serta dalam sedang media ini? Terima kasih Uh, jawapan kepada soalan kedua saya boleh mengesahkan bahawa dalam fasa ini uh, penting untuk pihak-pihak teknikal seperti Boeing dan Rolls-Royce uh, tampil ke hadapan. Saya boleh mengesahkan bahawa kerjasama dengan kita uh, daripada hari pertama lagi dan ini masuk kepada fasa di mana mereka akan tampil ke hadapan untuk menjawab apa-apa jua soalan yang diperlukan. Ini uh, jatuh di bawah empat perkara yang saya sebutkan tadi, satunya dari segi tim kepakaran yang bertambah setiap hari berhubung kait dengan tumpuan kita tumpuan kita uh, tetap menjurus kepada kedua-dua koridor, uh, tetapi dengan lead dan juga maklumat terbaru daripada Perancis, daripada China uh, daripada uh, Australia uh, sudah tentunya banyak aset kita ditumpukan ke koridor selatan dan ini untuk mendapat uh, pengesahan bahawa sightings yang dimaklumkan dahulu uh, memang datangnya daripada MH370. Kalau itu dapat disahkan, maka kita, kita tak teragak-agak untuk membawa semua aset kita dan juga daripada negara-negara yang membantu ke Selatan Korea. Tapi selagi kita dapat seperti dahulu, saya dah nyatakan memerlukan korporasi dan pengesahan. Selagi itu tak berlaku, saya rasa tidak ada kepada keluarga penumpang-penumpang dan kru untuk kita hanya tumpukan kepada koridor selatan. Okay, the next question, please. Ya tu dong hijau tu. Digi, kak, tapa, digi. Just stand up and ask a question, please. Thank you. Saya Rosma di bawah RTM. Ya, Rosma. Uh, saya difahamkan yang tentera laut uh, US uh, telah mengirim alat mengesan kotak hitam Dan saya nak tahu adakah ia berkaitan dengan permintaan uh, Datuk Sri uh, kepada US Untuk uh, apa peralatan untuk uh, untuk mencari di di uh, apa di dalam laut Sebab kita tidak mempunyai teknolo uh, teknologi seperti itu Dan soalan saya yang kedua saya dimaklumkan yang uh, media kita mendapat uh, layanan yang agak buruk di Beijing. Kita tidak di, uh, kita merupakan satu-satunya media yang tidak dibenarkan untuk turut serta dalam briefing. Uh, sedangkan media dari negara lain dibenarkan. Ia seolah-olah ada satu uh, sentimen uh, di sana berkaitan dengan uh, media dari Malaysia. Mungkin ada uh, sentimen anti Malaysia berkaitan dengan uh, apa? Uh, MH370 Saya rasa daripada sebahagian besar Penumpang-penumpang uh, sentimen anti Malaysia tidak wujud Malah mereka bukan sahaja menghargai Tetapi mengharapkan sangat bahawa kita teruskan operasi SAR kita Tetapi uh, masalah teknikal mungkin Di mana pihak media kita tidak dibenarkan kepada TC di Beijing Itu saya akan tengokkan supaya ianya tidak berulang Berhubung kait dengan alat-alat uh, daripada Amerika Syarikat dan uh, menjurus kepada pinggal lokator hydrophones contoh di mana kita nak mengesan uh, peralatan uh, di, di tengah laut ini uh, merupakan sesuatu yang saya telah berbincang dengan kepimpinan Amerika Syarikat kerana bukan banyak negara 
yang mempunyai uh, teknologi sebegitu rupa dan uh, sama ada ianya telah pun dihantar ke kawasan berkenaan itu memerlukan pengesahan daripada HECOM iaitu The Pacific Command dan uh, saya tahu bahawa Tan Sri Zul, uh, CDF kita telah menghubung, menghubungi Admiral Locklear berhubung kait dengan perkara ini saya tengok tidak ada masalah sangat kalau sekiranya alat itu uh, wujud dan keduanya um, bila ianya dapat digunakan di kawasan-kawasan berkenaan cuma saya nak tekankan di sini bahawa tumpuan kita ialah mencari dan mengenal pasti debris yang dikenal pastikan daripada setelah itu merupakan debris daripada MH370 barulah kita boleh gunakan alat-alat berkenaan tapi selagi itu tidak dapat disahkan saya rasa um, tidak masuk tidak realistik untuk kita nak mencari menggunakan alat itu di seluruh uh, lautan India. Okey, sebelah sini. Please. Oh, could you? Natasha, could you please? Thank you. Uh, my question will be to the Mars CEO, Encik Johari. On Saturday, the cockpit crew of Mars aircraft failed to inform the air control room when a flock of ducks actually strike at the aircraft windshield. And um, there was like glass all over the runway. In fact, Jet Airways several minutes later landed at the, at the runway and informed the control room. And also today morning, one of your flights were diverted to Hong Kong due to an inoperative aircraft generator. This shows the standard procedures are not followed by the cockpit crew and also the ground flight engineers. The comments on that, please. Uh, first and foremost, as far as the report in Kathmandu, I think this is not true. Um, the, what you call the, the flock of dust actually flew across the aircraft and hit the landing light of the aircraft. Okay, uh, we broke the landing light of the aircraft and the pilot immediately informed the air traffic control and submitted a report upon landing. So that's just not true as far as the Kathmandu uh, incident. Uh, secondly, as far as the, uh, what you call the flight to Incheon last night, uh, we had a technical problem uh, with the generator, and as a precaution, we divert the aircraft to land in Hong Kong. So it's not a safety issue per se, it's a technical issue that the aircraft had. Okay. Zaki, please. Second row. BFM. Please, could you stand up, please, sir? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I'm Keith. I'm from BFM 89.9. Uh, this is a question to the Mars CEO as well. Uh, there were reports that, it, that um, Malaysia Airlines did not opt for an upgrade that might actually have allowed search teams to locate MH370 easily. Could you elaborate on this? And this is one for the three good gentlemen up there. Um, now, hindsight is 2020 vision. Looking back, what would you guys have done differently that would have, one, permitted this, prevented this incident from happening, and two, made it easier to find a plane? Firstly, I've always been consistent. I'm not looking back. Uh, I'm looking forward. And our focus has always been to find the uh, aircraft concerned. And we have done that by trying to narrow the search and rescue um, area. And we have done that by using the most sophisticated equipment that is available out there with the support of our friends, 26 nations and all, unprecedented. So I, I, I would answer your question, your second question, um, that way. Okay, on the question, I answered that on Saturday. Actually, the same question was asked. So I think you can refer that. Okay. Okay, yang kat belakang tu. Um, hi, Suli from Ashwawani. Uh, can I ask, um, is there any ELT signals uh, from MH370 uh, that was picked up so far? And if there is not uh, sent, but could it be the signal was sent, but no one picked up because it was an old technology? And also, um, if the distress signal was sent out, who or which satellite would pick it up? There's no uh, distress signal being picked up by any of the ships or aircraft, any any of the satellite. There's, there's no pickup of the signal. On on. Uh, yes. 
My answer is there's no pickup by any of the vessels or aircraft or such like. On 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 the question uh, by by B, uh, the uh, BFM, I would say that uh, uh, the I have conducted uh, IKO Montreal this morning, and they say that uh, what what we have done uh, is, is is something that. Uh, they will have done as well, because they say that uh, the best people are here uh, assisting us in, in trying to locate the aircraft. The people from the, the, the American team and also the team from UK are here to help us. Uh, looking, if, if you look back, uh, this is what we're going to do, this is what we will do. Okay, please. Yeah, Datuk Sri Sufi Ahmad daripada Militarian uh, Datuk Sri selepas 17 hari MH370 dilakukan hilang Adakah ada apa-apa rumusan awal yang dapat dibuat? Contohnya pesawat disabotas oleh orang dalam semasa dia berada di ruang udara Ataupun terempas di kawasan lautan ataupun penemuan lain daratan Yang tidak diketahui di lokasi Kita kena tunggu um, sama ada pesawat debris Yang uh, telah pun dikenal pasti itu dapat uh, menjurus kepada kita mencari kotak hitam dan maklumat di dalam kotak hitam itu boleh membantu kepada apa apa sebenarnya berlaku tetapi selagi kotak hitam itu tak dapat dijumpai agak sukar untuk kita menjawab soalan tadi belum tetapi kita melihat kepada semua kemungkinan dan ini sedang di disiasat bukan saja oleh pihak polis tetapi daripada agensi-agensi antarabangsa. Okey, Zaki, belakang ni. Yes. Yes. Hello, uh, Joseph from the Navy Online. Um, it's oh, we understand that there's no conclusive evidence to prove what happened to the plane, but um, judging from uh, security concerns about uh, what happened in the past or the deeds. Um, is the government actually considering hiring air marshals just in case maybe to deal with these things? I think there are so many aspects to this uh, incident that we need to look at. Not only just Malaysia, but I think the whole aviation industry globally. And uh, from my uh, exposure with the experts around the world, uh, I, like I said before, we are uh, looking at an unprecedented situation where a lot of people can learn many things whether it is security, whether the issue of uh, surveillance. Um, and this can only be done uh, at a later date because um, more information can only be discovered uh, with the exact focus on uh, where the actual plane is. And that I keep uh, emphasizing because um, even the experts around the world um, cannot tell me more unless we have more information. And that must come from the, the plane itself. Okay, we now go to the international circuit. Yam, would you be the way? Yes, please. Could you stand up and introduce yourself, please? Hello, sir. I'm Alistair Lee Head from BBC News. Hello, Alistair. Um, obviously, there's much speculation going around about what caused this. I'm sorry to go over ground, but I must ask you, um, is there any strong indication that a pilot or somebody on board the plane was responsible for its loss, as opposed to this being a mechanical issue or something else that's non-human? I think the best way I can answer that is that we are not discounting that fact. But other leads that show, which relates to no ransom note, no groups uh, claiming to be responsible, uh, leads to further speculation. So basically, um, what we need to do right now uh, is what we are actually doing, which is to have parallel investigations. And whilst these investigations are going on, to be fair to the teams that are doing that, uh, we cannot reveal to everything. And if I answer that question, I will also be speculating. Okay. Thanks, Blani. Yeah. Hello, I'm Megumi from Japan Business Press. I wanted that uh, regarding the, the question just uh, from BBC as well. Um, actually, if you still keep open the facility to let the airplane to vanish, and uh, actually that caused the, the one of the possibility to think that the catastrophic failure, if so, 
your co-pilot co on the 377, actually he has been a training flight. Has he done already completed the training by using a manual system at the time? Because this is one of the major crucial agenda in terms of the uh, Air France 447, the co-pilot has failed to maneuver aircraft by using a manual system and actually that caused to vanish, to crash the aircraft to the Atlantic Ocean, according to the DEK French Authorities report. Thank you. Um, before I pass the question to AJ to answer, but uh, let me just say if you refer specifically to the uh, French um, Air France 447 crash, um, the team uh, is working very closely with us. And in fact, Mr. Jean-Paul Trodec, uh, who is the former Director General of BEA, I've spoken to him personally and they've given us a full cooperation on what they went through. And as you know, um, even after identifying and locating where the aircraft was, it still took them two years to find the black box. And basically, that process is ongoing. Okay, as far as the co-pilot is concerned, uh, he was actually new to the type. Okay, uh, he actually moved from a lower fleet to a 777. But uh, Mars has been very uh, strict in terms of its training. So he actually was, we do normally have the first five flights. The co-pilot normally fly with what we call a check co-pilot. Okay, this is his sixth flight, and uh, he actually passed the first five flights. We do not see any problem with him. Okay, and uh, so he's actually on the sixth flight, which doesn't require a check co-pilot. And you must realize that he is flying with a with an examiner. He's not flying with anybody less than examiner. He, no, uh, the the captain is a triple seven examiner. Hold on, gentlemen, please, sir. Um, question on this, sir, please. Uh, Jeremy Grant from the Financial Times. Jeremy. Could you speak louder? Jeremy Grant from the Financial Times. Um, for AJ, please, question. Um, the Australian authorities are going to stand and ask you for a full cargo manifest. Can you tell us if you've given that manifest yet and what is in it? The second question for the Defence uh, Minister. Um, you talked some days ago about um, requesting satellite and radar data from military sources. Can you tell us whether you've received that information, what you've received, and whether it's good enough to tell you what we know? Okay, as far as the cargo manifest is with the investigation uh, team, uh, it's really up to the investigation team to, uh, for the Australian authorities to request from the second team, because uh, that's one. As far as what is in the cargo manifest, I think we have said that it carries, you know, some fruits. Um, that's probably in a, in a box, uh, and then we carried uh, lithium batteries, but those are considered to be non-hazardous under the ICAO or IATA, because as long as you pack them in a, in a manner that's, uh, that's actually uh, uh, recommended. Uh, I think we carried about 200 kg of lithium battery, all right? Uh, so about 200 kilograms, and the others are what is deemed to be a normal, you know, uh, 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 basically cargo. So uh, we, we carry some electronic equipment, which is just some radios that uh, we, I think that was manufactured in Malaysia to China, for example. These are, and I think the full list is actually with the investigation team, and if the Australian requests this, I think they have to go and request this from the investigation team. Jeremy, as I said uh, uh, before, um, gathering of satellite information, analyzing of radar data, whether it's primary or secondary, military or civil, um, and increasing air and surface assets, and also the number of technical experts is the, the mechanism in which we are coordinating to reduce the area that is being searched. Um, I can confirm that the cooperation uh, from the military uh, of all the countries concerned, north and south, um, have been very, very good. And that is why in my statement yesterday, going to the northern corridor, when I confirmed that China, India, Pakistan, Myanmar, Laos, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan, and today we confirmed, if I'm not mistaken, um, 
minute. Turkmenistan, if I'm not mistaken. You add uh, Turkmenistan to it. Um, this is the process of uh, eliminate, eliminating and reducing uh, the, the two the areas of search. And satellite data, radar data, all have uh, come in and needs to be corroborated and verified. As you know right now, um, in the Southern Corridor, we have satellite uh, information uh, from the Australians, from the Chinese, and from the French. Um, and uh, an, an earlier sighting uh, between the two, uh, conversation between the two Prime Ministers, Australia and Malaysia, just a few minutes ago, confirms um, some debris that needs to be verified. So we are giving you information on real time. Okay, gentlemen, sorry, that is all the time we have for today as the Minister has a prior engagement. Thank you very much. We will meet again tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow.